Oh, it's raining, it's pouring, fucking hell, it's raining. But yeah, people, still getting our tracks going on. Penning Street begins to stake. But I just thought myself to stop into some shelter to uh, 79, 17. Pretty much, it's an elitist um, restaurant. Nobody can get in unless you have a key or a card key, whatever you want to call it. But yet, there is other floors to go into, but I bet they're all elites. Well, there's Pandora right over there. Uh, Piguette, Chloe, or Chloe, if you want to call it that. There's Omega over there, Omega. There's Dutch Triple Eight up there. But it's freaking ridiculously loads around here. But it is absolutely banging it down. Oh, with all this rain, it does give you a nice appetite. I'll give that to you. Remember, people, have you, do you guys remember watching the uh, TV show or the video game of Persona 4 when it was raining during the fog hour? And you get yourself the Mega Beast Bowl for literally half the fraction of the price. And then, of course, if you beat it, you become manly. It's like this right now, you make yourself extremely hungry. Uh, we're getting close to it now, people. We are getting close. It's just that this rain is slowing us down. Literally, my feet are soaked. I got no. Well, I have. I've got a fleece. But it's freaking. It's not cold. That's the thing. It's not cold at all. It's literally still humid. It's just that. It's that. It's like I said. It's that freaking dry rain that soaks you through. It's that very good fine rain. Fucking wet. <laughs> okay, people. So, I fucking slipped. <laughs> uh, fuck me, it scared the shit out of me. Fucking brakes on my bike. Uh, yeah, the roads are that fucking slippy. Even my non slippable shoes have no fucking chance. I thought I was going to break my ankle again, but because I went on my left leg again, but look, this time I went straight onto my knees. So my knees are fucked right now, they're fucking hurting. They probably will get better soon, but I'm just going to sit down for a minute, have a rest up really quick. I'm underneath pretty much the subway shelter, and then literally we're out, we're literally three minutes away from the game mistake, and then we can finally sit down and relax. So if uh, trial and hour we finally got here uh, open lunch 11 30 a.m. till 4 p.m. last entry it's at 2 p.m. then closing at 4 p.m. almost at 5 p.m. until 11 p.m. last entry 8 30 p.m. because you can eat as much as you can pretty much that's why it costs 10,000 yen minimum you can get extra it depends on what you want whether it's for drinks and all that bullshit well it's pretty much one of the best steaks I've had for quite a long time and like I said, I tried that one in Roppongi, it was lovely, it was beautiful and everything, but the price was just catastrophic for what amount you got. It was still mouth-watering, but this is just as good, and I fucking love it. There is one in uh, Akihabara, which I'm dying to try as well, which I might do that another day. But uh, yeah, let's try and get ourselves dried up and uh, have some dinner. Well, that was a fuck up. Reserve only today. Can this day ever get any better? <laughs> Fucking hell! I'm enjoying that. I'm gonna enjoy that, man. Oh, I need to find somewhere else now, then. Last thing there is though, where in this godforsaken rain will I able to get myself into when I'm fucking soaked? Uh, okay, so I've just been scouring the internet and there is another Ginza Steakhouse, which is the second shop. However... Fuck! I was fucking there! 
Oh my god, man, this fucking dog is insane. Uh, that means I have to walk all the way back up there again. And the pissing rain. YOLO. This Rolex. Now, if it says that this one is also a reservation one only, when it says on the website it isn't. I am going to kick so hard up the arse of a fucking Shiba until it feels my foot in his mouth. <laughs> I'm just so fucking hungry right now, man. I just want fucking steak. Okay, now I finally found one, people. Came to steak at the second house. Hopefully, it tastes just as good. There was two different sets. One was one with a fish. Didn't want our fish. But this one has other great items. Let's hope that it tastes just as good. What?
Ja, da. Well, that was absolutely fan freaking tastic. Uh, was it better than last last time? 100% it was. They had better cuts, um, more marble texture. Literally, the texture was all there. The flavour was there. Literally, the service was spot on. Five stars. Um, I do not see. I cannot see why on earth it does not get a Michelin star. That was definitely 100% worth a Michelin star. Um, so you may be thinking, what are we going to be doing now? Mm, it's hard to decide now because there's nothing really here in Ginza for we, really me for me to really go for. There's no book offs, there's no uh, mandrakes, there's no hard offs. There's nothing like that over here really. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to head back to my hotel, re dry myself, re clothe myself because I am soaking wet still. Even though they've looked after me in there so much, very very appreciative about them. And then I'm going to go ahead to Akiba to pick up some stuff that I noticed uh, yesterday and go ahead and finish it all off and pick it all up today before somebody else buys it. I'll see, you, see you guys when I get to Akiba. Holy shit ladies and gentlemen, that steak dinner was fan-freaking-tastic. You want to know how much it cost me? I'll tell you. It was fucking worth it. Worth every penny of it. And like I said, if you're in England, you'd have definitely got a tip. But in Japan, you're not allowed to tip. So, seat charge, 273 yen. Cheap as chips. Then, you get yourself, and then I got my normal set, which was 5,800 yen. And then you have 700 yen and then 677 yen. With all the rest of the costs and everything, it got me to a grand total of 8,195 yen. That steak dinner was fantastic, people. It was definitely worth it. If you guys want a very, very good steak dinner and you don't want to break the bank, that's the place to go. And literally, people, it's just literally... Um, if you don't want to go through all that bullshit of buying, like, you know, get, ordering the set menu where it, you get fish and all that, you do get a choice between two different things. Whether you want the um, chicken start part or the actual seafood and fish. And you guys know me about seafood and fish, I'm not really keen on it. I would, I wouldn't, I'd have it either way if I had to, because I, in this, the cost I picked, I got um, a, a cauliflower soup which had. Um, cubed scallops and it was really really nice um I won't say that was my absolute favorite part of the meal but it was still quite tasty i actually said something that i actually that i in england i wouldn't actually advise myself to eat because i don't want to fuck i fucking hate cauliflower with a passion but it was so subtle you could taste the cauliflower but it was subtle and yeah literally 10 out of 10 for the whole entire service it was absolutely amazing but what did I get from Ginza anyhow though? Because obviously there was no video games there, there was nothing. It was literally all bougie stuff. And you already said to yourself, you're not bougie. That's true, but I went to a Don Quixote. And once again though, people, apologies about this lot, but I wanted to film in there, but they will hunt you down if you were filming in there. I don't understand why. It's 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 a fucking ball ache, it really is. But like I said, I'll try and make the vlogs as, as good as I can, people, with the amount of restrictions I've got. But I went to Don Quixote. Uh, the Ginza Kit Kat shop shut down. Can't go to that one. So I have to go to the one in Ikebukuru. I'll have to go to another day because I really don't want to go to Ikebukuru again. That may, that wastes up another day then. So what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, people, just to let you guys know. I may I may even go to Ikebukuru today after I've been to Akihabara. Depends on how I feel. Um, because tomorrow... Gin Ginza's done now, 
So tomorrow, which is Tuesday, we're going to Yokohama. That's right, people. We're going to Yokohama, the Pokemon Center, and it's other Pokemon. That, and also that second-hand Pokemon stuff at, at the second floor of the shop. I am not wasting a day to go back to Ikebukuro when I want to do that. Let me just uh, have one of my uh, chocolate peels. So nice. Anyhow, what did I buy today? So, from uh, Don Quixote, I bought all the exclusive Kit Kats that I could find in that store. So we got this one here, looks like a digestive biscuit one, and remember this is the 50 year anniversary of Kit Kat, so there's going to be some exclusive out here, so this looks like some sort of like wheat chocolate digger stiff one, maybe. Then we have ourselves tea, let's have a tea party! Uh, you've got yourself a fan favourite green matcha, everybody knows that very well. Um, a different type of digestive biscuit. This looks like just a standard digestive, not um, chocolate digestive. Peach flavour. This is for the Sakura season. This is the Sakura edition. So, if you guys are thinking about what is going to be the Sakura edition for Kit Kat, it's Cherry Blossom, aka Peaches. And then we got ourselves chocolate orange. We have chocolate orange in England, but it's not like proper chocolate orange. It's like Terry chocolate orange. This supposed to be the, actually tastes like an actual fruit. And then I got myself these box editions. So we got looks like it looks like um, pretty much this is what it's supposed to be. Try and focus. It should be trying to focus by now. Come on. There we go. It should look like that right there. So that's what that flavour is. Uh, lime flavoured. Mmm, bit of citrus in our life. <laughs> uh, some form of a different type of tea. This looks like maybe Earl Grey or some sort. No, it can't be Earl Grey. That's freaking English. It's a Japanese tea, whether it is. We have ourselves strawberry and red bean paste flavour. That sounds nice. And then you have yourself toast. Toast flavour. Why not? <laughs> and also in Don Quixote, I had to buy these because I was told to get these before I leave Japan. And that is the Japanese Wave Edition of Coca-Cola, the special editions for Japan. Um, I'm going to open up one for the ch for myself and then this one is actually going to come home with me to keep sealed because these are going to be collector items because these are tinned bottles. You don't get these over in the United Kingdom. But what else did I get besides that? I also went to Godiva, as you guys know. Sadly, the rain was that bad, it took out the bag, which is a bit of a fucking ball ache, like, but doesn't really matter. At least it got protected either way. It did its job as a bag. But don't want you guys worry though, because I will be going to another Godiva down the future. So I got what I wanted, but not the actual cho chocolate flavour I wanted. I wanted the milk chocolate one, but we got white chocolate because of white day. These are potato chips, chocolate white. Pretty much they are Riffles salted crisps dipped in chocolate. I love them, okay? I really do love them. Uh, if I do find some more, I will be buying more of them. And then I bought these two other items. Um, so we have ourselves Godiva's milk chocolate, milk chocolate bar. And then we got ourselves Godiva's chocolatier pearls, dark chocolate with mint. These look Quite nice. And I'm actually going to try these out with you guys right now before we go ahead and set up at Akiba. Because today, if I have a chance, if I do have time, don't you guys worry, if you do have time, um, 
which is now it's 30, 14, 15, it's almost half the rate. We should be have enough time after going to Akiba, we should easily go straight back to um, Ikebukuru if we can for tonight. So that's what they look like, little tiny um, day poos. They're nice. After eights. Literally, after eight poos. Yeah, that's spot on there. Mmm, really nice. So yeah, today's been a um, a chocolate Kit Kat extravaganza today. Cheese! <laughs> so. so yeah, um, so if you guys want to know, yeah, tomorrow I am going to Yokohama, to the Pokemon Centre there, and also whatever else is there. Like I said, there is a shop on the second floor below the Pokemon Centre where there supposed to be a second hand um, of Pokemon plushies and if I do find some amazing ones that uh, I really want for my collection they will straight into my collection and I'll be buying them right away. Anyhow, I'll see you guys in a bit. I'm going to go ahead and dry myself up before I move out there because today it's been non-stop pissing down but it, thankfully it has now stopped and I'll see you guys in a bit. If I find anything special I'll try and record it. Cheerio! Okay people. I am now back in the hotel room for the day. Um, I picked up some quite some good things in Akihabara. Um, I'm excited as well. Ooh. So first off, I bought myself some singles. Um, pretty much some pretty much some good staples and some for good decks like Egyptian Slime, of course Lava Golem, Summon Limits. I've got a few Summon Limits people. And then I got myself some uh, Happy Traverstorm, and of course, Baron de Fjord. Oh yes, them three be bad boys. Not only that though, I also picked up three Access Code Talkers. I picked up an Ash Blossom, Maxi. I know this card is banned in the UK, but I have a good, good feeling this card is going to get unbanned. Two Super Polys, a Terraforming, and two ghost rares. Oh yeah baby, I went there today for that. But then, after that, I went ahead and finished off my Resident Evil collection with Resident Evil Gaiden, boxed. I do have it unboxed and it's just this cartridge but I really, really, really wanted a boxed version. So, it's now mine. Um, I picked up as well this. I paid 100 yen for this. This I picked up in the um, literally in the trash area. This is a Nintendo. Um, I think this is a Game Boy SP or Game Boy Advance um, link cable, so you can start trading with Pokemon games, so you can play online with them. So that's something that's awesome. This is a United Kingdom AC adapter for the Nintendo Switch, and I paid nine quid for this. Nine quid. It's Twenty pound in CX. And I don't really need it, it's just a bit of extra cash for me to trade it in and get some good stuff when I when I go back to Britain. I also picked up this bad girl. Yeah, Corin. Bot in its original box. This is one of the rare ones. And I picked it up as normal retail price for 3,000 yen. That is a good steal right there, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, I am keeping her sealed and it's staying with me because I do like my amiibos. I also went into a uh, trader and picked up some uh, American slash English games. Yeah, I didn't even go for Japanese games this time because I really wanted these games in English. Final Fantasy IX on the Switch. In the United Kingdom, we cannot get it as a physical version, only as a digital download. I finally got a physical version. Get in there. I got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on the PS4. This game is 55 quid in England. I paid. 4,000 yen ish, remember there? So I paid about just under 30 quid. Cannot complain. Uh, Do Not Open. Looks like an amazing horror game right there, people. Didn't even know they made a sequel. Blue Reflection Second Light. That's awesome. And then a 280 PS4 game called Black Desert. Why not? It's It was cheap. I might as well get it. But not only that. 
I've been wanting this thing since it got released. Oh my god. This is the PlayStation 5 Dual Sense Dual Sense Edge for the PlayStation 5. How much did I pay for this in, in here in this country? I paid just under 30,000 yen. Yes, just under 30,000 yen. You may be thinking, how much is that in English pounds? Well, 1,000 yen is 6 quid, so let's say 60, 120, just under 180 pound. How much is this thing going for in the United Kingdom when it was came out in retail price? 250, retail now, or 210? I think I did a great fucking steal there, ladies and gentlemen. And it's staying with me because I really wanted this thing so damn bad. And then, the cream of the crop for Yu-Gi-Oh! this fucking thing <laughs> I pay 9,000 yen but with tax 9,900 yen this is the dual this is the rush dual dual disc it comes with a load of special secret rare cards including the dark magician girl and that dark magician girl alone is worth 60 pound at least she goes even more sometimes if you get it graded you get a load of these special cards as well, some stickers and all that lot, unless that's actually sleeves, I don't know. But, yeah, it's a jewel disc. I might as well get another jewel disc now that I'm growing up and everything. And we can't get this one in the United Kingdom because we do not have Rush Jewel. So, I may have, I may, I may be the only one in the United Kingdom that has one of these. I doubt it though. <laughs> Anyhow, so, that is for today's episode, people. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you smash like subscribe down below and the reason why i'm going to be a little bit quiet is because it's night time and people are trying to sleep so sayonara for today tomorrow we're going to yokohama that's why people where a lot, a lot of stuff is over there are going to be and there's rumors that there's a lot of cherry blossoms over there too but also we have the pokemon center there and a special underground pokemon center mystery area where they resale old Pokemon plushies. See you guys then. Cheerio!